in the pet store of his person in Madrid, Ispamar in Brazil. But let's listen now to the range operations director. Voilà, on continue à dire coucou à Airbus au Muro et à Toulouse. And Airbus is following us in uh, Les Muro and Toulouse and uh, Ayen Espace and Evry and all of our other partners in uh, Europe. So, Eve, maybe we can go ahead and talk a little bit about H0. At H0, we'll see the Vulcan engine being ignited, and a very short test will follow. Then the rocket boosters will be ignited, and it's the power of the thrust of the boosters will make it possible for the rocket to lift off. We'd like to greet all the people following us on the Internet. Let's now let the images speak for themselves. A tous des DDO. Attention pour les décomptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top, allumage Vulcan, allumage EAB, décollage. Les paramètres à bord sont conformes à l'attendu. Eh bien, c'est comme d'habitude, c'est phénoménal, c'est époustouflant. As always, it's absolutely amazing. It's too quick and with a very uh, low cloud cover. But we are talking about 1,300 tons of thrust. That's the equivalent of 60 aircraft engines. And the two boosters are producing 90% of the power of the launcher. And the consumption rate is uh, close to two tons of propellant per second. In two minutes, 240 tons of propellant will have been uh, consumed. Yes, you can hear the extraordinary noise levels being on the terrace here, we can truly feel the power through these uh, shock waves of sound. As you know that our cameras will simply not be able to track the launcher uh, for very long, so we'll have to uh, go back to the trajectory that you see on the screens. This reflects in real time the trajectory of Ariane uh, 5 because there's a little square that is moving along the predicted trajectory. You can see now on the bottom part of your screens to the left, altitude in kilometers, to the right, speed in kilometers per second. In the sky above Kuhu that is overcast, in a few uh, moments, uh, the boosters that are manufactured here in Guyana will have completed their mission, and the launcher will be able to jettison these empty boosters as 36 tons each, so 72 tons will be shed, but this is not counting, of course, the mass of the propellant. These boosters will be separated thanks to a pyro cutting of the rods, and to avoid any collision with the central body of the launcher, eight distancing rockets is push them away. We just saw it on these 3D images. Images. And here we can see it from the onboard camera images. The mass at launch was 70, 773 tons, but it slimmed down very fast indeed because it shed over 500 tons, that is, two turns two-thirds of its um, launch mass, but there's still 230 tons in flight. The next stage will be when the fairing is jettisoned. The fairing protects the passengers against pollution, against acoustic vibrations that lift off, and against um, aerodynamic heating due to friction, but that's for the early stage of flight. But above an altitude of about 100 kilometers, the atmosphere is a near vacuum. There's no longer any heating induced by friction. So the fairing can be jettisoned safely for the two satellites. In fact, we've just seen this. It is uh, jettisoned at an altitude of 111 kilometers. It splits in half, and it seems to uh, fall back into the ocean two and a half tons less on the launcher. And of course, once the launcher mass uh, uh, decreases, the faster it can go. 
This is a 17 meter high fairing. It's made of a special honeycomb material. In just a few instants, we're going to re-experience liftoff. It took place less than four minutes ago, very quick, because uh, the uh, cloud cover is very low. Look at the images. Everything goes very fast. Ion 5 is almost like a bolt, and it disappeared very quickly. What did you feel, Eve? You had not seen uh, such a liftoff for a long time. Well, the last Ariane rocket that I'd seen from the outside was Ariane 4 with liquid propellant. And here I would say that the major difference is, of course, the extraordinarily flash of light that we see. In fact, we saw the whole skyline uh, lighten up. And also the astonishing acceleration, Mach 1 in 49 seconds. It was indeed impressive, maybe short, unfortunately because of the low cloud cover. This is the, three, the third replay. It's almost the most magnificent. And you can see the cameras are actually shaking. We'll now be coming back um, inside. And we will carry on commenting other images for the rest of the mission. Now for the, the news. first launch of 2014 took place on the 6th of February, and Ariane 5 flawlessly performed her 58th successful launch in a row, orbiting two satellites, ABS-2 for the operator ABS and Athena Fidus for Telespazio, on behalf of the French and Italian space agencies. At Satellite 2014, the chairman and CEO of Ariane Space, Stefan Israel, called for the U.S. to open its government market to international launch services competition and said Ariane Space was ready to bid for opportunities. The European Space Agency has a new director of launchers. Following in the footsteps of the highly respected Antonio Fabrizzi, Gailey Winters says Ariane Space is a unique position to compete in world markets. Today is an important day, an important day for Ariane Space with this new launch of Ariane 5, but also an important day for the customers who have put confidence in this launcher and want to see their satellites in space to, to be integrated in their business. We have a unique situation in Europe with a system of three launches, Vega, Ariane 5 and Soyuz, capable of responding to the requirements of all customers worldwide. A unique system which works very well, but it's not the end of the story. In this business, one has to develop, one has to make new technologies, one, have to, one has to increase the performance of the launcher. That is very important, and that is exactly what we are working on. We in ESA, together with industry, with the national centers and Ariane Spas, are working on improvement, improvement of the Vega launcher, the significant improvement of Ariane 5, and also the preparation of the development of a new launcher, Ariane 6. This is the way to go for the future. This is the way to go to maintain our access to space in the future and to respond to customer needs and to continue the success of the present European launch system. Ariane Space is to orbit OPSAT 3000 for the Italian company CGS SPA and Venus for the Israeli Space Agency, together in a dual launch on board Vega in 2016. We are preparing five launches at the same time at the CSG. Ariane 5 will soon be ready to fit up to 10 and MERSA 3B for a launch in May. The fifth automated transfer vehicle, named after the Belgian cosmologist Georges Lemaitre, is scheduled to launch on board Ariane 5 in July, destined for the International Space Station. Soyuz number 7 to launch here at the CSG is planned for 3rd of April to orbit the European Space Agency's Earth Observation Satellite Sentinel-1A. And the light lifter of the Ariane space family, Vega, is being ready to launch Kazakhstan's first Earth observation satellite, DZZHR, built by Airbus Defence and Space. Well, hello again. I'm back in the commentary box with Claude. And we're hearing there from the Range Operations uh, Director that everything is going according to plan. Claude, we're tracking the launcher using ground stations as she flies over. It's called telemetry, isn't it? Um, We've just received a signal from the second one, that's Natal in Brazil. Yes, it is, and uh, Ariane sends uh, data to ground stations. Uh, it tells us how the flight is uh, progressing in real time. 
and later we will an analyze this data to see how the vehicle performed. Uh, we call it, uh, in our language, the level zero flight evaluation. So we can see that the main stage has now cut it's off its engine. And it's falling back away. We've uh, jettisoned it and we are switching on the uh, upper stage. So we're shedding weight. And we started with 773 tons and now we have approximately 28 tons left. That's only 3% of our original mass. So we are looking now at, uh, for anyone who's uh, unfamiliar with what we're looking at, on the left-hand side you can see the disc. First of all, you can see the, uh, the motor, the blue flame. The disc, the uh, grey and white disc, is the upper stage. And then we have the, uh, in the centre there, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, the black is the SILDA, and we have um, Astro 5B at the front. So we're now burning the upper stage. Its job is to deliver the satellites to their transfer orbit, uh, Claude. That's the position in space where they can separate from the launcher. And this upper stage is a complex piece of um, engineering uh, with uh, cryogenic propellant uh, inside, of course, 15 tonnes worth, and it will burn approximately 16 minutes. Claude, talk us through this uh, curve. If you look on the top right-hand side of the screen, you can see uh, the, uh, that curve there. All eyes on that at and, this point in launch. And this curve is a computer simulation of the trajectory showing the exact flight events, like the velocity, the altitude, and all the separations. And you see there is a white dot on the curve. This is the actual position of the launch vehicle. The speed, uh, it's... Uh, 7.13 km per second, and we are flying at 172 km high. So, um, if you look at the trajectory, you can see that uh, we, we climbed very steeply initially. We've sort of plateaued out, and uh, we're actually losing a bit of altitude before we gain altitude again. What's that about, Claude? Because we often call this, don't we, the roller coaster. And we will decrease uh, our altitude a little. Don't forget that the mass of the launcher decreased too. So this is why we are taking more speed and uh, we will use all the thrust to increase our speed. And this helps to push us towards our destination, 612 kilometers above the Earth. Uh, and at that point, we will be traveling at 9.4 kilometers per second. All the teams there, everybody concentrating hard, and uh, the range operations manager calling out the key milestones during this launch. Astra at the front, the SILDA, the black section in the middle, and uh, the upper stage at the back there, powering us through space. And you can see the curvature of the Earth, it's uh, quite something. Quite something to look at. Our first satellite to be separated is Astra 5B. It was built by Airbus Defence and Space using their Eurostar 3000 platform, and that's for their customer SES, the Luxembourg operator. Ariane Space and SES have developed an, an exceptional relationship over the last couple of decades.